The second stage of recovery after facial palsy is called paresis, which is when the symmetry of the face starts to improve and tiny movements may begin. At this stage, the first thing people notice is that the symmetry of their face looks better when their face is relaxed and the muscles feel firmer. Whilst exercising when your face is completely floppy is banned, once you get to the paretic stage, some gentle exercises can begin. This is all about practicing small, very precise, symmetrical, balanced movements. It is extremely unlikely that you would be starting these exercises before three months, and you must not start them if you cannot see any movement at all in your face. Remember, when your nerve isn't working, you can't force it to work. That would be like trying to switch on a lamp which isn't plugged into an electrical socket. It just wouldn't turn on. If you exercise too early, you can really do more harm than good. If in doubt, don't do it and get specialist advice. If your face is still floppy, you should view the management of facial paralysis videos. It's possible your eye may still not fully close at this stage, in which case you should view the eye care and eye taping videos. During this paretic phase, it is important to continue the massage that you may have started in the flaccid phase. There is a video available that shows you how to do this. You will also find during the paretic stage that the unaffected side of your face still continues to overwork. If so, it's important to continue to do stretches for the unaffected side until your face is always completely symmetrical at rest. There should be no tightness in the unaffected side at all. If you need to do these stretches for the unaffected side, there is a video available that shows you how to do them. By the time you view this DVD, it is also possible that you may already have passed the paretic stage and are noticing synkinesis in your face. Synkinesis means linked or unwanted movements. For example, the face twitching, the eye narrowing when you eat, or the cheek lifting when you close the eyes. If you are not sure what synkinesis means, please watch the Introduction to Facial Palsy DVD. If you have got synkinesis, this doesn't mean that you can't do the paresis exercises. However, you may need to be cautious in terms of doing your best to control synkinetic movements whilst you do them. More information about this can be found in the synkinesis exercise video. Exercises during paresis are difficult and extremely important to get correct. Therefore, we highly recommend that if you do not already see a specialist facial therapist, you ask your doctor to refer you urgently. The exercises given in these videos are just a few of the exercises that are important in regaining good facial movement. However, Due to the complexity of other movements, we have only included the more basic expressions here. Exercises during paresis focus on performing movements of the face that are small, precise and symmetrical. The effort used to do the movements must be very gentle and must be the same on both sides. Generally, the effort should be no more than 2 or 3 out of 10 as you can see from the scale on the screen, which means almost no effort to very light effort. Using too much effort will make movements spill over into the wrong muscles and will make you more at risk from synkinesis. Also, effortful facial movements just don't look natural. In day-to-day -day facial movement, the highest anyone would get on the effort scale would be 4 or 5 out of 10. So we would certainly never exercise at a higher level than would be commonly used. The accuracy needed for good facial movement requires you to think carefully about which muscles you should be using for a movement and also which direction that muscle should be moving in. 
It can be hard when the face has not moved for a period of time for the brain to find the address of a muscle in order to activate it again. Exercise is all about re-establishing the links between the brain and the muscle without other muscles getting involved. Prior to having facial palsy, your face would have simply moved without requiring thought. After a facial palsy, it is not possible for the face to simply start working again as it did before. Movements have to be learned from scratch. Rather like learning any new skill, such as riding a bike, learning a musical instrument or foreign language, learning facial movement requires lots of practice. However, not just any practice, perfect practice is important as practicing something badly can be worse than doing nothing at all. You will need to really think about how your facial movements feel on the unaffected side of the face and use this as a model for learning to move the affected side of the face again. Exercises during paresis are difficult and extremely important to get correct. Therefore, we highly recommend that if you do not already see a specialist facial therapist, you ask your doctor to refer you to one urgently. We all smile differently. It may be useful to look at photographs of you smiling before you had your facial palsy to see what was normal for you, as there can be a strong tendency to overdo it rather than be gentle. Step one, in relearning to smile, Place your fingers in the hollow of your cheek underneath the cheekbone on the unaffected side. Step 2. Smile gently on the unaffected side only. Step 3. As you do this, pay attention to which muscle you can feel moving. Sometimes we find people clench their jaw and it's really important to keep your jaw relaxed while you are doing this exercise. Step four, after each smile, it's important to completely relax your face. The main smile muscle sits in the hollow under your cheekbone. This is the green muscle shown in the picture. As you smile, the muscle moves towards the ear, as shown by the arrow. Touching the muscle as you smile can help you identify its activity better. It's important to know where the muscle is and how it feels before you can even begin to try relearning your smile on the affected side. Once you feel you have identified the smile muscle on the unaffected side and have felt how it moves, then, and only then, you can try to copy this movement on the other side. To help you do this, you can try touching or stroking the smile muscle on the affected side. Remember to check your jaw is relaxed as you practice. The effort used in your smile should be no more than two or three out of ten. Although this may seem like a tiny exercise, facial movements normally are effortless, so this really is the correct way to practice. After each smile, remember to completely relax your face before trying again. Once you feel you have found that smile muscle on the affected side, you can have a go at putting both sides together. This is all about practicing a small symmetrical movement. The smile must start at the same time on each side, move the same amount on each side, end at the same point on each side, and then relax down at the same time on each side. Remember, you should just be feeling the smile muscle in your cheek and the jaw should be relaxed. After each smile, completely relax your face before trying the balanced smile again. There may be just a flicker of movement initially and that's absolutely fine. Movement should never be pushed too hard. The most important thing is that it is balanced and equal on both sides. In the early stages, the smile muscle will get tired extremely easily, so you should stop if you are finding you lose concentration, the movement feels unbalanced, or you are tensing the jaw or other muscles. It's important to practice little and often, perhaps five repetitions carried out five times a day. 
You may find it helpful to bring to mind a memory or thought that makes you happy or something that is mildly amusing as you are practicing your smile, as emotional input makes smile training even better. Try to remember to use your balanced smile when you meet people throughout the day. This won't come naturally at first, but the more you use it, the more naturally it will come. Don't be afraid of using your smile. It's important to smile when you feel happy. Sometimes you may feel you need to hold down the strong side during the day if it's tending to overwork, just to make sure your face stays balanced as much as possible. Exercises during paresis are difficult and extremely important to get correct. Therefore, we highly recommend that if you do not already see a specialist facial therapist, you ask your doctor to refer you to one urgently. Rounding the lips is a very important movement which we use in speech, whistling, kissing and blowing. Remember, there can be a strong tendency to overdo movements during exercise and it's important to be gentle. Unlike the smile exercise which you could practice on each side individually, it's important to practice rounding the lips on both sides at the same time, as this is how it always works. The lip muscle is a circular muscle which goes round the outside of the lips. This is the green muscle shown in the picture. As you round the lips, the muscle pulls the corner of the lips inwards and forwards, as shown by the arrows. Touching just inside the corners of the lips as you round them can help you round the lips better as you can make sure your fingers are moving towards each other equally. It's important to know where the muscle is and how it moves before you can even begin to try relearning your lip rounding. Step 1. Place your fingers just inside the corners of the lips on both sides. When you round the lips, the fingers should move closer to each other and the lips should move gently forwards. Step 2. Pay attention to the lips, making sure one side doesn't work harder than the other. We often find that one side will push the other side off centre and it's really easy to lose the symmetry of the lips on this exercise if you aren't careful and gentle. This is all about practicing a small, symmetrical forward movement. Step 3. If it's difficult to keep the lips symmetrical as you round them, use the fingertips to just help make sure the movement on both sides is balanced and equal. Step 4. After each movement, it's important to completely relax your lips. You can keep your fingers in position while you're relaxed if you want to. The effort used in your lips should be no more than 2 or 3 out of 10. Although this may seem like a tiny exercise, facial movement normally is effortless, so this really is the correct way to practice. After each movement, remember to completely relax your face before trying again. The lips must start moving at the same time on each side, move inwards and forwards the same amount on each side, stop at the same point on each side and then relax at the same time on each side. Remember, you should be feeling the movement around the lips, not anywhere else, especially not in the cheek. After each movement, completely relax your face before trying to round the lips again. There may be just a flicker of movement initially and that's absolutely fine. Movement should never be pushed too hard. The most important thing is that it is balanced and equal on both sides. In the early stages, the lip muscles will get tired extremely easily, so you should stop if you are finding you lose concentration, the movement feels unbalanced, or you are tensing the muscles. It's important to practice little and often, perhaps five repetitions carried out five times a day. You may find it helpful to think about gently blowing bubbles through a bubble wand as you are rounding the lips, as thinking about something like this helps the brain find the muscles more easily and makes the training even better. Try to remember to use your balanced lip movement throughout the day, for example, when you are speaking to people. This won't come naturally at first, but the more you use it, the more naturally it will come. 
Some things like sucking on a straw take a bit more effort, but it will be really important to try and get the lips as balanced as you can at all times and really try to stop them twisting to one side. Exercises during paresis are difficult and extremely important to get correct. Therefore, we highly recommend that if you do not already see a specialist facial therapist, you ask your doctor to refer you to one urgently. Sometimes after facial palsy, people may not realise their eye on the affected side isn't closing completely. It can be helpful to ask someone to have a look when you gently close your eyes and see if your eye completely closes or not. The person in this picture thought their eye was completely closed, but you can see there is a little gap between the eyelids, therefore they need to do eye closure exercises. Remember, there can be a strong tendency to overdo movements during exercise and it's important to be gentle, especially for eye closure, which is the gentlest of all movements. It's important to practice closing the eyes on both sides at the same time, as this is always how the eyes gently close. The muscles that close the eye are very delicate muscles in the upper eyelid, which are shown in green on the picture. As you close the eyes, the top eyelid gently comes down, as shown by the arrow, to meet the bottom eyelid. It's important to realise that the lower eyelid does not lift up at all when gently closing the eye. Touching the eyelids as you lower them can help you make sure that the eyelids are moving equally. It's important to know where the muscle is and how it moves before you can even begin to try relearning eye closure. Step 1. Place your fingers gently on both eyelids. As you gently close the eyes, the fingers should move downwards at exactly the same speed and distance. Step 2. Pay attention to the eyelids, making sure one side doesn't close quicker than the other. There should be no feeling of squeezing the eye shut, as that would be too strong a movement and would use the wrong muscles. If you do squeeze the eyes shut, you are not practising the correct movement, and the eyelid will not get stronger or close better in the long run. We often find that the cheek will try to lift up to help the eye to close, so it's particularly important to make sure the cheek stays relaxed. This is all about practising gentle, symmetrical movements. Step 3. If it's difficult to close the eyes at exactly the same time, use the fingertips to help Make sure the movement on both sides is balanced and equal. Step 4. After each movement, open the eyes again and completely relax the face. You can keep your fingers in position while you're relaxed if you want to. The effort used in closing your eyes should be no more than 1 out of 10. Although this may seem like a tiny exercise, eye closure normally is effortless, so this really is the correct way to practice. After each movement, remember to completely relax your face before trying again. The eyelids must start moving at the same time on each side, move downwards the same amount on each side, stop at the same point on each side, and then open at the same time on each side. Remember, you should just be feeling the movement in the top eyelid, not anywhere else, especially not in the cheek. After each movement, open your eyes and completely relax your face before trying to close the eyes gently again. Don't worry if you have to help the eye quite a lot in the first instance. It will improve and movement should never be pushed too hard. The most important thing is that it is balanced and equal on both sides. In the early stages, the eyelid muscles will get tired extremely easily, so you should stop if you are finding you lose concentration, the movement feels unbalanced, or you are tensing other muscles. It's important to practice little and often, perhaps five repetitions carried out five times a day. You can also use this exercise after using eye drops 
or when your eye feels dry to help spread moisture across the surface of the eye.